Hey, hello, and welcome back to the Kiss Street Noise YouTube channel. Obviously, this isn't the podcast. Lewis isn't here yet. That'll be back later in the week when we finally both get over Sunday's heartbreaking defeat to Sheffield United in the FA Cup. No, this video is actually from Sunday night where I had to collect all my emotions and stuff the tissues down the back of the sofa because I was asked to join Mark Saggers on Talk TV to talk about Sunday's game, the season overall, and our hopes for the future. I hope you enjoy, and we'll be back for the podcast very soon. Well, there might well have been drama at Old Trafford between Manchester United and Fulham today with a, an absolutely uh, unbelievable six minutes with three sendings off and two goals for Manchester United. But as far as an exciting FA Cup quarter-final goes, there was nothing better than the game of Bramall Lane today. Sheffield United 3, Blackburn Rovers 2 and how it finished. Both sides, of course, at the moment also looking uh, in different ways towards promotion or possibly in the same way. Sheffield United second in the league and Blackburn at the moment back in fifth. So high time we talk to uh, both Sheffield United and Blackburn followers in Johnny uh, Gascoigne, the Shoreham View, a Sheffield United fan. Good evening to you, Johnny. Good evening, Johnny. Can you hear me? OK. I can hear you, yes, yes, Good I can man. hear you now. And uh, <laughs> Robert uh, Hine as well, the Kittis and Duke Blackburn podcast as well. Uh, Robert, um, commiserations today. Wasn't to be, but drama till the very end. Yeah, I think as a neutral, it was probably the most exciting FA Cup tie of the weekend. Um, definitely. Agree. But um, yeah, unfortunately, we were on the losing side. But I think if you watch the game overall, it could have gone either way today. And unfortunately, it wasn't to be for us. But having said all of that, um, you know, I, I can't with with both of you, with where you are as well in the championship, the number of games that you're taking place that, you know, uh, it's not complete disappointment at this stage of the season. It would have been terrific for Blackburn to have uh, obviously got to Wembley for a semi-final. But I, I sense as well the way you're playing and the way that game went today that there is, uh, and the position you're in that um, there is still a great possibility, even if it's by the playoffs as far as you're concerned, that you've got a good enough side now to get back to the top division. Yeah, I think coming away from the ground today and the journey home, although we were disappointed, I think we've, we've proven to just not only ourselves but the rest of the league that we can compete. Um, I know a lot has been said recently about Sheffield United spend, spending and um, the squad depth that they've got. And I think on another day, the subs that we could have made, if we had the experience of Billy Sharp coming on and some of the more experienced players, if we had that depth to bring on, it could have been another result. The problem is, you look at our bench, we've probably got three, four academy graduates that have mm -hmm. not played a lot of minutes in the league and just in it, not inexperienced because they are good players but you can just when you're holding on to a 2 or lead away from home at a tough ground to go to you could just do with a, a strong head to guide you through them big moments really yeah that's a, well said on that um what about the uh the, the calmness in that last minute 91 minutes gone and tommy doyle with well what an fa cup winner that was absolute thunderbolt i mean we never shoot from there <laughs> and the reason we never shoot from there is because it never goes anywhere near the gold and the one time we do it goes yeah. flying in so can't be disappointed with that i, I, I do want to say everybody's barking on about middlesbrough and luton yeah blackburn play how they played today they get borough luton in playoffs they should be confident that's a they were a credit to the side today pushed us all the way they will feel unlucky because to lead twice uh whether the first one was a penalty or not that i'm not going to go into that they, they were a very good side and we had to work very very hard to mm -hmm. get back into that game and it, it shows how important it was to us with a 90th minute winner and it's going to be heartbreaking for you guys i do understand that but my god it was good to see that flying <laughs> and uh the, the semi-final now of course uh to, to come for you guys um up against manchester city but uh so what yeah i mean you got the easy draw didn't we um <laughs> <laughs> manchester city after, well, to be fair, they only scored one more against Burnley than we did. So what have we got to worry about? Yeah. We're, we're fine. We'll, we'll get on fine. It is as bad as it sounds to Brighton, and no disrespect to Brighton, because they are a very, very good team. That's the draw that we possibly would have wanted. Sure. But if you're going to go out and you're going to play a semi-final against a Premier League team, why not go against the champions? Yeah. yeah. And one more from you before I come back and, and talk a little more about Blackburn as well. Um, you're in second. You've been up there in the... The, the, you know, in this sort of 
area for some time now. You've got your game yeah. in hand, but you still, as you've mentioned it, you know, Blackburn with their game in hand, Middles were looting. It, it's vitally important now that, 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 in a way, with the cup run gone, that you can focus on what you need to do because we've seen it so many times, haven't we, that... Um, yeah. the, the other side's still very much in, in in chasing mode and suddenly you have one bad result and things just don't quite go your way in another and suddenly it's uh, playoffs rather than automatic. Exactly. I mean, if you look at the way we're playing, every time we think we're out of it, we lose to Middlesbrough and then we go away and win at Reading. Yeah. And then we think we're out of it when we lose to Luton and we go away and win at Sunderland. So every time we think we're out of it, we come straight back in and th yeah. that's the sign of a team that wants to go up. <sighs> We've seen it with a lot of clubs where they, they go on a bad run that extends. We had that earlier in the season, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that's as far as it really goes. But with teams like Blackburn, Luton, Middlesbrough chasing, all really good sides. And I don't, I don't mean this to sound in a way dismissive, but we need to concentrate on what we're doing and not what on they're doing. Yeah, of course. Because if, we, if, if we're looking at their results, it's only going to play in our own heads. The dreaded game in Andre thinking, oh, no, they won. We need to win this game. We need to go out and play our own game, do our own business. <laughs> We all, and just hope that we're not in a playoff. The, the thing is, though, all of us, whether you're down the bottom <coughs> or you're near to the top or you've got yeah. an opportunity to get into a playoff place or you're in the playoff place and you've now got a game in hand, I haven't been able in 60 years to get it out of my head when we've got games in hand, either trying yeah. for promotion or, or trying to stave off as Cambridge United are this year, relegation. You know, you think, well, yep, 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 that's all right. We've still got real opportunities. You sort of forget how you're playing at the time, don't you? Yeah, definitely. We, we've had times this season where I've said, I said last time I was on the show, we, we, we don't get out of second gear. Full credit to Blackburn. They made us they made us go up the gears today if we wanted a chance. I just wish we'd show some of that same fight in the league. Yeah. Because the the sides that go up will be the sides that show most fight. Blackburn go out to win games. Luton go out to win games. Middlesbrough especially go out to win games. So I'd like Sheffield to now go into the next league game and go, you know what? Confidence on a high. FA Cup semi final against Man City. Let's go out and show why we're there. Let's get yeah. into fourth gear. Let's pump a team. Well, Sheffield United, so we're probably going to lose one 0 Yeah, well, <laughs> and of course Sheffield United off to uh, Wembley, but uh, there's absolutely, I mean, your goal if you don't go up as uh, first or second is also to get to Wembley and a playoff oh, place. Don't. Not again, not again, well, please, not again. Yeah, <laughs> this is what happens. We know. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it does, I mean, you know, it, it could be anything. At least there is still that big opportunity. And, uh, you know, away from what happened in that game today and everything, you, you must feel now, now that you, you have got the opportunity in your own hands to have your decent run in. Definitely. Um, there have been some games where we've played the preferred players and it's not really gone to plan. And we played the same midfield tonight that we did against Sunderland. And it's what we've been crying out for. It's attack, it opens up your better players to actually get in better positions. And it's a brave move because they aren't your players that got you from League One to the Premier League. So it is in our own hands. We know if we put our, our best team, we play the way we can, we can beat anybody on the day, whether it's an easy game or a very difficult game like we had today. We know we're capable of winning because we will push to the 90th minute. We will push past the 90th minute and it is in our own hands. I'm just hoping that now we don't end up in the playoffs because we, we've faltered and we've kind of think the job's done. Because in this division, the job's never done. No. Robert, um, I'm, I'm sure that Blackburn as well, even though you've not won that game today, you, you're in a similar position now in the league, aren't you? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the results went our way this weekend. It was quite fortunate. So we're four points clear of seven with the game in hand, albeit the game in hand is our huge rivalry with Burnley, um, <laughs> which will be ne at the end of next month now. Um we're in a good position. I don't think anyone expected us to be here. I don't think anyone expected us to get to quarterfinals of both cups. So it's been a very positive season. On I think on nights like tonight, you, you you're naturally disappointed. But sure. if you look at like the overall season, it's it's been fantastic for us. And for like Jan Dahl's first season in charge of English football, I think he's done a great job and he's brought positivity back to the team. We didn't really expect anything from this season. I think if you'd have told people, would have been five minutes away from a Wembley visit with four points off seventh with nine games to go, they just snap your hand off in August. So no complaints from me, really. Do we, I mean, I, I've thought about this this season more than any other. You know, we've come out of COVID. We've, a, a lot of players have had a lot of uh, 
Well, like, like all of us had, we, most of us feel pretty knackered, don't we? And we, <laughs> even, even now still, and professional sportsmen must, whatever we think, you know, the mental and physical stuff and everything like that. But what, what I think you mentioned here with your, with your new manager and everything, the right bosses for me now have to have these communication skills and make sure that the players don't feel threatened if they don't get it straight away, but as long as they show that they can understand it and they're doing what he wants, that makes all the difference, whether you're going for a promotion or you're staving off relegation. You've got to believe in your manager. Yeah, well, he's, he's coming like a new style of play. He wants to play out from the back. And I think early on in the season, a lot of fans were frustrated that we were making mistakes. And look, it's so easy for, I think, football now in modern day times, people see a centre back make four or five mistakes and think, oh, it's we'll by another one in, in January or in the mm. summer. Where I think uh, Yondol's stuck with his squad and he's going to try and improve every player. And the players that we've got, I think today we've got Carter from the academy, Costello from the academy, who was on the loan list before Britain got injured. Mm. So, like, like, these are all our own players that he's turned into not only our regulars, but probably that championship player of the season, not player of the season, but team of the year contenders, yeah. especially. Um, so I think the fact that he's willing to improve our own players and not just go, oh, well, you're not good enough, I'll go pass one for three million or I'll go spend another 10 million in the summer. Um, so that's one of the most crucial things because Rovers over the years have had a, a good academy where talents have constantly yeah. come through. It's going to have to convey belt for us. And I think a small town team has to do that because we can't go and bankroll another team and take their talent. Um so I think not just this season, how well we've been, it's looking ahead to the future. If we can carry on improving at this rate, mm. the, then playoffs and uh, Wembley visits won't be out of the line, really. Well, just continue with that. And uh, um, uh, one more question on that to both of you. And Robert, I'll, st I'll start with you here. I firmly believe that clubs have the responsibility now to bring academy players through, to give them a chance, um, sense they're good enough, see if they're good enough, and also if they are good enough, not to just waste money on other players who, by uh, all accounts at times, we've all seen it so many times, these players come in and they don't fancy it after six months if things haven't gone their way. Yeah, I mean, I mean a lot's been spoken about how we need to breed new talent in this country to help the national team as well as the clubs and we see it a lot of times where rather than bring through your academy midfielder mm -hmm. they might go and spend five ten million on the swan from one of the european countries and play them every week um and i think there's a lot of argument for if they're better than what you've already got yeah when you've got lot when you've got local lads that are talented and they know how much it means to the club it gives an extra incentive to the fans as well to get behind them if you can see someone that not only um, is a good player, but plays for the shirt and wants to put everything on the line to help his boyhood team do well. Uh, it, even if, like like today, when things haven't gone as well as we wanted to, you, you saw all 6,000 fans staying behind to clap the players because they yeah. know that not, not one of them could have done anything more to yeah. help that result. Great, great points that you're making there. Johnny, for you guys too, I mean... You nearly did a bit of this uh, under Chris when you you got back into the Premier League not that long ago. Yeah, it's a strange one. We've always had a good academy. You've got Yari Maguire's, mm. uh, Kyle Walker's, Phil Jagielka's, those type of Billy Sharp type of players that come to our academy. Mm. We've always had a good academy. But it seems to be now that the, once you get to a certain level, the gap kind of closes and the academy players don't have to just be good. They have to be exceptional yeah. from the get-go. So maybe that's, that hinders the progress of some players that they have to go out on loan and make the seasons of the league. But I'm not opposed to that. Go out and make a name for yourself, come back to your first team. A lot more clubs should be doing that. Mm. You've got your Man Cities with your Harlands and those, and phenomenal teams to watch, brilliant teams to watch. And we're going to get we're going to get to see them all at Wembley, but th these are players that cost millions and millions exactly. of pounds. Uh, rather than, other than Foden, can you, can you really think of one player Man City's brought through themselves? or Man U, or anybody else up there, Chelsea, Arsenal, apart from Saka, one player maybe on every team. It, it would be nice to see teams, not just like Blackburn, not just like Sheffield United, teams bringing through these youth players, building a golden generation for the future, like Man U did back in the day. Um, I, I, with the way the game's going, I just don't see it. So we've just got to try and keep up, I think. Yeah. Johnny and Robert, great work. Thank you very much indeed. I'm sure we're going to speak again before the end of... 
the season. Sheffield United and Blackburn still very much involved. Sheffield United in both the FA Cup and also in the Championship and Blackburn in a playoff place still with an awful lot to do. Southampton and Spurs. Meltdown of both clubs recently. We're talking Spurs and Southampton's next on the Sunday Night Club.